Guys, I'm here to tell you that the Lisan Al Ghaib of roguelikes has risen. Out of all games, Slice and Dice is, without a doubt, the one that will lead us to paradise. Specifically, a pair of dice. Pairs of dice. I, I like puns, okay? Shut up. Slice and Dice is a turn-based dice-rolling roguelike that's as easy as Yahtzee, but unlike Yahtzee, is actually fun and doesn't look like you're doing your taxes at a craps table. You're given a party of five heroes and have to clear 20 fights of increasing difficulty, collecting loot and leveling up your heroes along the way. The crux of Slice and Dice is that, shocker, everything is dice. Your heroes are dice, the monsters are dice, and players use their mice to roll their dice to kill the monsters or pay the price. Each side on every die has a corresponding action and pip value that determines the potency. A 3 pip damage side will do 3 damage, or a 1 pip healing side will heal for 1. And whatever you land on is what you have to work with for that turn. It sounds pretty mindless on paper, but in practice, it's a seamless blend of strategy, puzzle solving, and luck that makes it truly one of a kind and is sure to bring out your inner Duke Devlin. When starting a run, you're given a choice of three random party compositions, and upon choosing one, you're thrown straight away into your first fight. Every hero class has strengths and weaknesses that help fulfill different roles within the party as indicated by their color-coded type. Yellow heroes are your standard melee damage dealers, gray heroes excel in tanking damage and protecting your party, orange heroes are your standard rogue, uh, adjacent classes offering things like poison and range damage, blues and reds specialize in magic and healing respectively, and greens are kind of weird and a bit niche, but hey, look, a cat! Beyond their types, though, the individual classes vary widely and have several subtleties to their dice that make each one of them unique. Some classes have basic but reliable actions on their die, while others offer more powerful actions at the cost of having more blank sides, making them higher risk but higher reward. Some classes have cantrip sides, which activate whenever that side lands. Other classes are adept at generating mana for casting spells, and so on. Furthermore, you can modify the sides of your heroes' dice with items you loot along the way, either by simply buffing them or replacing them with different actions entirely. There are a ton of options. On top of that, your heroes take on new classes upon leveling up, meaning your party is constantly changing during the course of a run, which gives you opportunities to pivot to different strategies that will complement these new, more powerful classes. The Scrapper, for example, has a side that gets more damage the more armor points he currently has, making for potentially high burst damage by using shield abilities on him before attacking. Some synergies can get extremely powerful, but given the randomness of the dice rolls, having your party also be flexible enough to contend with the numerous any types is just as important. The enemies are extremely well thought out and are usually more than just a damage threat with some hit points. Some, for instance, have specific conditions that will make them flee, such as running away if they're the last one alive or fleeing if the target next to them gets overkilled by a certain amount of damage. Bosses in particular are exemplary in this regard with different strengths and weaknesses to account for, from constantly summoning minions or becoming immune to damage for a turn at certain health intervals, or my personal favorite, snowballing the Baron boss down with magic due to getting mana back for every two health he loses. Now, this may all seem like a lot, and it would be if it weren't for one thing. This little guy over here. This is the most powerful undo button in the history of video games. Well, almost. This button is the glue that holds everything together. With it, you have the freedom to experiment as much as you want with any given turn to help you get the most out of every move you make. Hell, if you have any rerolls left, you can even go all the way back and completely change what dice you had to work with. This transforms every turn into a small puzzle and gives you that big wrinkly brain feeling whenever you solve them. Finding a way to weasel out of a seemingly lost cause is something you'll be pulling off regularly, and it feels really good every time. On top of all of this, there are global modifiers through blessings and curses that can completely shake up the game even further with hundreds of modifiers designed by the devs. The replayability of Slice and Dice is practically limitless due to the sheer amount of content present. There are a bunch of other game modes to mess around with, from a mode that lets you recruit your own custom party, a raid mode which doubles the number of heroes and monsters on the board, a mode that creates a party of randomly generated heroes, and a bunch of others I haven't even touched yet. It's ludicrous. <laughs> it doesn't even end there either, because the game even has its own built-in 
fully text-based modding system that lets you create or import your own custom heroes, monsters, items, even game modes, all by simply copying and pasting some text. It's really cool and allows anyone to create their own stuff, whether it be they're playing on PC or mobile, which, oh yeah, this game is on mobile. Funny aside, for some reason I thought this game was only on Android until Tan, the creator of Slice and Dice, just happened to stop by my stream the other day to inform my ignorant ass that it was in fact on iOS. Wait. Sharing your game, as in like, you made this? Holy sh**, Tan! He then just gave me a key for the mobile version completely unprompted, so hey, thanks for that, Tan. I gotta say, I honestly kind of prefer this game on mobile, which is incredibly weird for me because I don't really play mobile games because, well, mobile games. It's a perfect fit for the platform, and the fact that you can play it in portrait with one hand is a huge plus. I played this shit in the shower, for God's sake, which I don't recommend. Not because of the risk to your phone, but more because it'll end up being a long shower. Which leads to the last thing I want to say about Slice and Dice, which is less of a con and more of a warning. Time absolutely melts away with this game. In just a week, I spent over 50 hours playing this game between PC and mobile, with 10 of those hours being in one day. I spent more time on this game than my actual job, sometimes while at my actual job. Hell, the dev even included an in-game clock because apparently it was making people late for work, and honestly, I believe it. Just keep that in mind if you play this because it can really suck you in. So I want to put a lid on this by saying that Slice and Dice is probably my favorite game I've covered on this channel up to this point. It's one of the few games I've played where I pretty much have nothing bad to say about it. I genuinely just like the game that much, and I think more people should play it. If nothing else, I can guarantee it will be a better time than Dungeon Dice Monsters. This is how it works. There are six types of crests on the surfaces something. of these dice. That two makes out of the much three dice in the gold. During the turn, the key elements of the same type of summon quest is Sounds simple enough.